instructor is the man who, through his books, records, and television programs, has introduced the benefits of yoga to more people than any living authority, Richard Hittleman. Welcome to Yoga for Health. My dad's name was Richard, Richard Hillman, and uh, he was a, uh, a yogi, a yoga teacher, a philosopher, a writer, an entertainer, television personality. Uh, came to be known uh, primarily through television, although he had, leading up to that, he had written several books and continued to write books through his whole career. Um, books on the subject of, of uh, Hatha Yoga. Um, both sort of the, um, the, the sort of popularist uh, version, which was, you know, the, obviously the posturing, the, the poses and the, the, the physical uh, nature of, uh, of yoga, but then also um, sort of the philosophy, sort of, um, I think, a, a more easily consumable version of uh, sort of the, the Eastern philosophy that went along with it. I would like to continue now with our discussion of yoga philosophy. In that state of universal mind to which we have been referring, one knows the true nature of his own being. He knows who he is. And he becomes, in this sense, whole. He achieves yoga. He made it popular at a time when it was really an outlier thing. You know, it's kind of hard to imagine that now when, you know, every gym has yoga classes and, you know, I mean, all across America and in the world for that matter. It's very, very commonplace. But at the time, he was kind of the only, the only guy doing that stuff in the, in the early late 50s and early 60s. I've been teaching yoga for more than 20 years now, and I've had ample opportunity to observe the remarkable benefits that yoga imparts to the body and mind. I had the opportunity when I was very young, maybe 10 or 11 years old, to visit uh, the set of one of his shows. And um, I don't have a lot of early childhood memories, but that one for me was vivid. Um, I can remember every moment of being in that space, in that soundstage for the day, and watching the way um, that process unfolded. And I was fascinated. I was totally, totally, totally enamored. I think I tried every angle as I grew up to sort of test the waters and see what, um, how I could get into that business. First series was shot in London in the early 60s, and then he shot another series in LA in the late 60s, and then uh, the last series that he did was shot in the Bay Area in the early 80s. I was in an episode of that show. You know, it was um, just fortunate, I guess, that my dad decided to do this one last TV series where I got to sort of see that firsthand and be a part of it. So my dad was born in 1927 in New York, and his parents owned a, um, a Catskill resort, a hotel in the mountains, the Catskill Mountains, called Utopia. You know, the sort of the classic Jewish summer retreat. And um, my father, as well as my uncle, worked there during, during the summers. Um, in upstate New York. And uh, the story goes that there was an employee there who was a Hindu. And uh, he was the guy that actually introduced my dad to, to yoga. So very, very early in life, you know, um, when my dad was really, really young, he had this influence. I have often puzzled and puzzled about what it must be like to go to sleep and never wake up. To be simply not there forever and ever. Yes, he was a friend of Alan Watts. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I don't know exactly how that came about. I know that they both, uh, both studied and then later taught 
at a, um, a uh, Eastern Studies school in Southern California. My mom has stories of, um, of hanging out with Alan Watts and Ginsburg and those people when he lived on a, um, a houseboat in Sausalito. Our house was an ashram in a way. We would have people that would come and stay and that um, you know, he would work with one-on-one -on -one and um, you know, would come to, to study with him. Um, he had a yearly uh, summer workshops that I would go to every year down in uh, Monterey. He, uh, he had several teachers that would teach Hatha Yoga three times a day and, and he would lecture every night. Meditation is your true nature. You call it meditation now because there are thoughts distracting you. When these thoughts are dispelled, you will remain alone in the state free from thoughts. And that is your real nature. He was a student of, of Maharshi and he, you know, he did almost all of that by correspondence, you know, through letters. And only actually, um, I think twice in his life ever went to India. There was not a lot of expectations placed upon me to think any one particular way or follow any particular path. But, you know, it was there and I absorbed it. And, but it was always interesting to watch my dad stand up in front of, you know, a big room full of people um, who, you know, really, really, really looked to him for, for, for guidance in their own personal path. And yet in our home, you know, there was not, there was not a lot of lecturing. There was not a lot of discussion about that. It was just kind of, it was kind of out there. He received a lot of letters, <laughs> you know, as I was growing up and I'd go and get the mail from the mailbox every day, there would be a stack of a couple of dozen letters, you know, at, at the minimum. Um, and there were a lot of, um, a lot of prisoners, a lot of people incarcerated would, would reach out to him for guidance. As far as I know, he answered almost every single one of those letters. If the guy had had email <laughs> available to him, his whole life would have been different. <laughs> it was interesting to see him, to see him, you know, as playing an integral role in strangers' lives, you know. I mean, I guess you could say that about anybody who's, you know, I mean, an actor or a writer or, you know, a, 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 you know, a learned person of any kind. But, but uh, you know, just as, as his son, as, you know, observing that as, you know, my dad playing that role in other people's lives was, was definitely interesting. In his own entrepreneurial way, he saw that there was, there was uh, that, that what he was uh, putting out there through his books, that he could reach a wider audience through television. So... And that's exactly what happened. Practice what we've done in this program, if you can, before we meet again, because the more you practice, the more pronounced will be your results. Until next time, this is Richard Hittleman wishing you health and peace.